And on Monday, I kind of, I just uh, demonstrated the uh, uh, reflection from the step potential. And I think I gave you some qualitative idea of the uh, tunneling where the incident wave packet doesn't have enough energy to actually go through this barrier, but it does. And, um, and I think that's where I left the things at. And uh, reading through this uh, in preparation of this meeting, I noticed some things that uh, this, um, um, this exercise demonstrates that I think will help um, reinforce the classical intuitions that you have, but uh, recast some of those intuitions um, in a way that's compatible with wave mechanics. And so, and yeah, choose the potential to be constant and zero EV. So that uh, actually is actually valuable in that it can demonstrate some things. Um, oh, let me just make sure my energy is actually zero good. Um, okay, so yeah, so when I do that, um, as at first side, it might look like, oh, nothing interesting is happening. Um, I mean, this is spreading out for some reason, but other than that, um, like, okay, this wave packet or pulse is moving from left to right. What, um, okay, <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, and what's uh, useful here is that this actually demonstrates the uncertainty principle. Uh, you might remember from your reading about uncertainty principle. It's the one that says that if you measure two values simultaneously, um, two values uh, or for a given wave function state, if you um, estimate an uncertainty in the position of that wave function or position of the particle as represented by the wave function, and uncertainty in the momentum as represented by the wave function, then there's a minimum value to that, that which is h bar over two. So this combination on the left-hand side, it can be greater than h bar over two, but it cannot be smaller than h bar over two. And this simulation at this stage is already, um, already demonstrating um, this, uh, this relationship. Now, superficially, it might look like that uh, this wave function it only shows the, the all, only shows the position uncertainty. Uh, it shows a bit of a spread of the wave function about you know two nanometers. So that when you make a quantum measurement, you have some probability of detecting it in one place, but you might also detect it in other places. And um, if you imagine making this measurement, I don't know, thousand times, you will get a kind of a histogram. And that histogram will look like this probability density function. That's kind of the meaning of probability density. So, one could ask, how does this illustrate um, uncertainty in momentum? And there's two different ways to get at that uncertainty in momentum. One is uh, the, uh, what you might call uncertainty in the wavelength. So, so when you look at this uh, wave function from here, you know uh, this is showing the real part. You can also show the imaginary part if you want to make sure there's match from here to here. Uh, this shows something that, um, so it shows you what looks like one wavelength that looks like about a nanometer. But what you have to be careful here is that if you truly had a wave function of wavelength one nanometer, this thing would repeat that um, that pattern you see over one nanometer for infinite uh, duration of infinite expanse of space. Unless it does that infinitely, it's not at the fixed wavelength. The kind of the mathematical procedure you have to go through to get a shape that looks like this, get this localized wave function, is you have to combine a wave of wavelength about one nanometer with other waves of a shorter wavelength. 
And what ends up happening is that in this, you can arrange them in such a way so that in this one region, it um, they all constructively interfere so that you get this little bump and that's your wave packet. And at these outer edges, they get out of phase and they destructively interfere so that you get more or less a flat line. And this is a mathematically more um, precisely described than uh, well-defined in terms of the Fourier analysis, which we won't get to today, but it's in part B. So you can, so that's one way to see how there is a, um, uh, the uncertainty in momentum that there's an uncertainty in wavelength and you can go from the uncertainty in wavelength to the uncertainty in momentum. And that's all been lectured on. Now, there's another way to estimate, measure um, the uncertainty in momentum, and you can do it as a more direct measurement. And I think that's described in one of these steps here. Uh, let's see. Ah, here it is. I did describe it here. Here, you are going to measure the uncertainty in the moment of the wave packet, and this is how you do it. This is describing a way to directly measure that uncertainty in momentum. So, when you saw me run this simulation, you saw this wave spread out, and I want to tell you that this is spreading out the wave. Uh, it's something new. It's not something you have seen before when we were dealing with the light. Like you could have a pulse of light and that pulse of light would not spread out in position as it propagates through space. And there's a reason for that. Um, the second postulate of special relativity, light always travels at speed of C. So both of the long wavelength light with a less amount of energy, less momentum, and short wavelength of light with more energy and more momentum, they both travel at the same speed, C. So they have no reason to spread out. Now here, this wave packet is describing a, does it say it's an electron? Um, yeah, electron wave function view. So it's describing an electron which has mass. So which means when you have different amount of momentum, the the because of its mass, its velocity is not c. In fact, if we are dealing with a non-relative stick electron, the we have this relationship between v and p between speed and momentum. Um, speed is momentum divided by mass, non-relativistically. So, so that's what we're seeing here. Uh, the portion of the wave that has kind of moved farther ahead. You can kind of think of that as that's the faster uh, velocity or higher momentum component that moved ahead of the, that moved ahead faster than the average um, of the whole collection of the momenta that made up the wave packet. Or the part that's uh, falling behind, that's the slower part of the wave packet. So, so the fact that this uh, wave packet spreads over time, that uh, one, it's directly showing the distribution of the momentum. So it's, uh, sorry, uh, it's directly showing the distribution of velocity. So um, starting with that uncertainty in velocity, you can infer uncertainty in momentum. And, and, and that's what the simulation is showing. And I think uh, when you go through these estimates uh, precisely, you should find that the, because you know, people who programmed it know, knew what they're doing. Um, you should find that the way this simulation is programmed, it should show the, um, it should show the uncertainty principle holding, as in when you go to the initial condition and the, and when you calculate the product of the uncertainty in position and momentum, they should be greater than or equal to h bar over two. And this simulation also demonstrates that this relationship is on inequality. It's not on equality because at this point, there's certain amount of position and momentum uncertainty. And when you look at a later point in time, now at this later point in time, you don't have any more precisely defined the momenta 
all the wave components that were present at the beginning, they are still here. And so, um, so the uncertainty in momentum did not go down, but the uncertainty in position went up. So if this product was right at the limit before, now it'll be uh, greater by like factor of three because the spreading out is spread up by about a factor of three, even though the uncertainty in momentum does not go down. And there's one other thing you can do here to uh, illustrate how the narrowness of the um, wave packet is tied to the momentum uncertainty. Here's a kind of a drastic example. <laughs> so I have this thing paused and I can make a quantum measurement. I can make a measurement of position. Okay, okay, position is measured here. See how sharp this wave function is because we're trying to represent within my precision of measurement within, I don't know, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 nanometer, I have localized the particle, I have detected it here. Now, when I let the simulation run, you will see something striking. The wave just spreads out. It's because this, uh, it's because this highly localized wave function, it was necessarily associated with a high uncertainty in momentum. This uncertainty was in fact large enough that some portion of wave function actually goes backward because with this highly localized wave function, the moment uncertainty in momentum is large enough that this has to include components of wave that's actually traveling to the left instead of to the right. So that's one. <laughs> and maybe a slightly less dramatic example is you can actually vary the initial width. And I think the simulation always tries to, oops, that's position that width. This simulation always tries to prepare this uh, wave packet in the minimum uncertainty state. It tries to put together this packet in a way where this product is minimized as much as possible. So when you make the wave packet narrower, um, then you will find that the rubber not as narrow as it was when I made the measurement. You will find that this actually spreads out more quickly due to the greater uncertainty in momentum. And if I make the wave packet broader then, but it was, so, you know, it's a starting out broad and, but as it travels, you'll find that, oh, it doesn't broaden out more as much um, because it has a smaller amount of momentum uncertainty, meaning smaller amount of velocity uncertainty. And uh, and sometimes you can answer, uh, ask and uh, answer this uh, interesting question of, okay, um, what value of uh, sigma would you have to set at the start in order to make the width when this particle reaches here minimum as small as possible? And I think that's actually, uh, yeah, I, I don't ask that question, but <laughs> if it's something you want to answer, you can. And it's uh, something that, I think uh, you know reinforces your mechanical intuition that velocity and momentum are related this way. And in quantum mechanics, where we are introducing some strange new things, so we are doing that. But some of the ideas that we learned in mechanics, like this, V is equal to p of r m, doesn't simply go away. There are still ways in which to um, feed our understanding of quantum mechanics. Uh, make sure that it's consistent with other things we learned in the classical mechanics. And all of this is, I guess, kind of all subsumed in the correspondence principle that to the extent that you can take the quantum mechanical things to the regime of classical mechanics, which has been experimentally verified, to the extent that those regimes overlap, what you have verified in classical mechanics should continue to hold in quantum mechanics.